In this Tax Syndicate video, we'll be covering the tasks available in the Quick Flight Toolbar and how to use DataSync to rapidly share info to your team. In a follow-up video, I'll cover how to create and fly routes. I need to preface with the items available for tasking in UAS tool are dependent on what your drone, OEM, or protocol make available. If you can't fly to a waypoint in your OEM app, then UAS tool can't magically make it happen. UAS tool is simply leveraging the capability your UAS already has and making it work from within ATAC. It is essentially just another third-party flight controller software. I also have to mention there is a robust user manual available for UAS tool on TAC.gov and it's also embedded in the plugin. For this demo, I will be using a DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise. If you are just starting out with the OES tool, be sure to watch my other videos on loading the requisite ATAC app, plugins, and detailed files, and then the video about the basics of UAS tool use. At this point, I'm assuming you can at least fly your UAS using UAS tool. We're going to start off with the quick flight toolbar tasks that are located at the top of the screen. The tasks available are takeoff now, emergency stop, return home, quick task, which is basically a fly to location function, and follow me or follow that. All right, so we have the drone connected and we will start from left to right. Since I'm on the ground, I have this icon that says go in the green circle. That is the take off now button. If selected, we'll take off to the altitude set and hover. You click on go. You can use the slider or the plus and minus and set your altitude. We'll set it at 154, click take off now. One thing to note is you have to be in the normal mode. If you're in sport mode, this will not work on a DJI. This will climb to the altitude set. Notice the go icon has changed. Now this button allows you to have a slider to set altitude. So click on here, and now I can lower the altitude if I want. Set altitude and it'll come back down. The next button to the right, the pause or the emergency stop. If you have any of these automated tasks going on, you can click that, click OK, and it'll stop the task. The next tool is to fly home. Click on that, and it will fly home. Depending on your aircraft, you may have to finalize um, about the three foot mark to bring it all the way to the ground and use the joysticks to get on the ground. All right, we'll hit go again and we'll take it up to just under 200 feet. All right, the next button to the right is the quick task. This allows you to quickly send the aircraft to any location on the map. To do that, back out of here, find some place on the map you'd like to task the aircraft to. This could be a previous marker you have on the map, it could be an intersection, really any place you want the aircraft to go to. I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna click on this marker, and it's gonna reposition the aircraft and it notice it's going to start flying that way. I have the augmented reality turned on, so you will see that point show up in the video. I like to fly at night. It's pretty useful showing off the augmented reality. All right, it's flown to that point. I can flip on the thermal if I'd like. 
All right, the next tool to the right is follow me or follow that. If I hold down, I get the option to currently follow myself or I can click this target to the right and choose something. Right now, I wanna have it follow me and it's gonna set a standoff distance of 52 feet and I can change whatever that is. I'm gonna hit cancel and I am this arrow here. That is my location. That matches my that is matching my call sign you can see down below. So if I go back over here, it's chosen that, I hit OK. And now you'll see the aircraft turn around. And it's going to fly and set that standoff distance at 52 feet. It will stop. So if I was to move around, walk down the street, it's going to keep the standoff distance and keep following me. Turn this off. The next thing we're going to do is follow another object. So I've got this fictitious fire engine here set on a simulator. So I'm going to fly out to the street and we'll get lined up on it. All right. So now I'm going to hold down again. Hit the target. I'm going to zoom in, and now it's set to this engine one marker. Still got a standoff distance. Let's bring it to 80 feet as an example. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to start the simulator, and as that object starts to move, the aircraft will follow. And it creates a new fly to point every time it notices that object move. All right, I finished my mission and now I wanna automatically fly home. When I showed that off before, I took off straight up and it came straight back down. You do have control over what altitude the aircraft will fly home at. So if I back out of here, click on here, click on settings, you can see that down here you have your go to home battery percentage. So if it hits 15%, it's going to fly home. Go home altitude at 200 feet and I'll land now at 10% battery. So we're going to go back. I'm going to take the aircraft down to 136 feet here. I'm going to hit go home you're gonna see the aircraft go up to that 200 foot altitude, then fly home. And that's that, we're back on the ground. Now let's cover data sync. For an in-depth understanding, of course, there is a manual on tech.gov, and I have a YouTube video on my channel that goes over data sync operations in depth. We're just gonna focus on how you share points of interest rapidly to teammates. This goes both ways. This allows all TAC users to push mapping elements into the mission so everybody can stay in sync. There are other ways to widely share data to other users like broadcast, but if someone is not connected to the server at the time it was pushed, they won't get that message. The beauty of data sync is if you can 
subscribe to that mission and come in and out of network. As soon as you get connected again, you'll get that data. So the caveat is you do need a tax server to make this work. One way or the other, you got to get connected to a tax server. So we'll assume you're connected to a tax server on your network. I'm going to cover this from the UAS operator's perspective. Right now, I have a button mapped on my controller to drop a point of interest on the map. This drops a marker where my camera is focused on the ground. If you've not done this before, check out my video on the basic settings for UAS tool. So I have a data seek mission set up. We're going to show where that's at in ATAC. I'm going to click on data sync. And right now you can see I'm subscribed to this fire test. This is a list of all my data sync feeds for all the tax servers I'm connected to. We're going to use fire and this fire test. All right, I'm going to back out of here. I'm going to get airborne. Let's pan down. And let's go to split screen mode so we can see this happening. All right, I'm going to click my C1 button and drop a marker on the map. It indicates it dropped a point of interest marker. Now, this brings up all the options. I can send to a feed, a group, a team, these people individually, or select all. Remember, data sync is under the feeds. I can click on that and choose an individual feed. If I click here, it's going to send to all feeds I'm subscribed to. So that's one option. So we'll click here, hit send. Now you can see it automatically opens up data sync here and you can see that we added this point of interest uh, onto the data sync mission. Now we're gonna set data sync up to send every marker that I put on the map into the data sync mission. This can save time. I'm gonna click in the gear icon up here, scroll down and hit auto publish new content to this feed. Hit save. Now, I'm going to go back to UAS tool and let's spin around here and let's drop another marker. I dropped another marker. It looks like it did before. It's showing feeds, groups, team lead teams, and all these individuals. Rest assured, it did send to the data sync mission. So we can go out of here and click on data sync and you can see this new point of interest marker was added. So even though it brings up all those options, it is automatically sending that data into the data sync mission. So that can really save some time. And if I spin back around and I wanna drop another one, Drop that point of interest. I can go back and go back into my data sync mission. And you can see that other marker was dropped. Well, I hope this helps you get a better understanding of the basic task in UAS tool and how you can share points rapidly with using data sync to the rest of your team. Thanks for watching.